Let's come back home. Where Nigeria's headline inflation came to a roaring 1.8% higher in July to top a 17-year high of 19.64% reading. That was announced on Monday by the statistics uh, uh, office. The rest, as the saying goes, uh, is history, but not just yet, considering how the inflation is already forecast to, to top 20% in the current month of August. Uh, taking Nigeria's steady rise in inflation into the investment markets for me is Tosin Oshukoya, who is an investment professional and the CEO at Comasio uh, Partners. Uh, uh, Tosin Oshukoya joins me uh, live here in the studios this, this evening for this uh, conversation, taking the whole inflation into the investment market. Great to have you uh, in here in the studio. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. It's good to be here, boss. Good, good to be here again. Thank yeah. you. Let, let's do this one. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's been quite some time. Yes, uh, and we knock on your doors uh, as as uh, a top uh, investment professional when we're looking at inflation. What's your reading at Commercial Partners when the numbers came in yesterday morning? I mean, it, we were not surprised at all. Um, you would agree with me that the buzzword out there right now is inflationary pressure. I'm not sure the man on the street will be surprised <laughs> as well. You'd be surprised that a blind man would know that. <laughs> it's inflation is, inflation in, is, in the air, is in the air. It's in the air. It's everywhere. Um, the United States of America, obviously, they've been the, the major driver of this in terms of you know, how to curb inflationary pressure. But bringing it back home, our problem is both exogenous and you know, internal problem. Mm -hmm. And when I say exogenous, I mean external factors arising from you know, the, the, food, uh, the food prices on the rise, right? And energy costs on the rise as well. Ut utilities. Yeah. Um, so, and it's simply because we are an import dependent country. So we will suffer. We will be at the end of the stick. And it's unfortunate. Re also, if you look at the internal factors, you would look at um, the fact that the food price had been on the rise as well. The food price um, is well over 20%. Oh, sorry, it's about, and I've, imagine yeah, that above, yes, above about, 20, Official, so yes, 20%. yes, that's about 20%. And yes. that's scary. It's scary in the sense that this is a country that is endowed with agricultural resources. But what has happened is we've had issues with security. We've had issues with logistics and transportation. Mm. And obviously, if you find it difficult or you struggle to move your products from the farm to the market, you would bear the brunt when it comes to, you know, the, uh, the debt of infrastructure facilities that you do not have. And security in between. And security as well. Mm. So all of these culminate into having our inflationary pressure on the rise. I'm just trying to find out how we're burning things, uh, the candle at both ends. You know, if you have food inflation and you have your core inflation is, is sluggish, then yeah. you say, well, perhaps we could. But now food inflation is up. Core inflation is also rising because transport, utilities, energy costs, everything is rising. So uh, folks are now butted somewhere in the middle here. That, yeah. That's what it looks like. I mean, and when you say folks, it's everybody. So it's not just the poor. Even the rich are also right now feeling it. Um, I don't know how the much... The rich also cry. <laughs> the rich also cry. I don't know how much you pay for power, you know, in the last few months. But if you're really paying for power in this country, you will feel that, yes... Well, the news coming through hasn't really been really confirmed. Was that the electricity folks says they're going on strike from tomorrow, Wednesday the 17th. Uh, you need to make a phone call as soon as you're out of the studios to be sure you've got <laughs> enough. You've got enough diesel or whatever you're using for your generator because it, it looks like we're going to go because of the TCN, which yeah. is the transmission company. Uh, it's down as many times as we can remember, we can count. But, but given the wider macroeconomic underpinnings, uh, you mentioned a bit of that in terms of inflation and, 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 and core indices. I mean, the geopolitical uh, tension around the war between Russia and Ukraine, I think, is a major driver. Mm. And that started in, in February. And what has happened is you would see that Russia... Obviously, they account for about almost 8% of the crude oil supply to the world. Between Russia and Ukraine, they account for almost 30% of wheat production. Wheat production to so many countries is actually, I mean, wheat export mm. to so many countries, especially in Europe, is a big business. Even in Africa. Even in Africa. Egypt is doing about almost Egypt 100%. is actually suffering the most out of, you know, the neighboring countries mm -hmm. around, you in know, the, the Sahel region. The, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that is filtering into the, 
the, uh, the underdeveloped or the developing countries that are import dependent. So the inflationary pressure we are experiencing now, like I said earlier on, it's likely because of uh, the imported inflation, elevated inflation into the country, mm -hmm. and not until that is being addressed. What has happened recently, I don't know if you're aware, is we've seen some moderation, particularly with wheat prices. And you'll see that, you know, moving into the next few months. The next few months, we might probably see moderation in, in wheat and vegetable oil as well. So that could potentially give us some respite. Mm -hmm. But we still need to address the local problem with food prices in Nigeria. We look at food production. Yeah. Uh, but again, we need to also deal with the energy issues. I'm sure, I thought you were going to mention that because, again, we got to do something and very quickly we're sinking under the fuel subsidy. So, I mean, it's really... Uh, it boils down to the structural problem in this country. Nigeria is meant to be an energy supplier. And when I say energy supplier... Net energy supplier. Net energy supplier. I'm not talking about just crude oil. In terms of our gas reserves, it's huge. Even electricity. Yeah. Europe right now is crying because um, Russia just shut down... Uh, the taps. The, yeah, the taps. The Nord Stream. Mm. And right now is producing 20% of its capacity. You can imagine that for many decades, Nigeria had gas in huge, in huge capacity. And we're just flaring it. And we never made investment into that space. You can imagine if we had investment into that space, we would not just be powering in the African continent. We could also... In fact, perhaps if we have used the NLNG uh, 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 dividends and whatever. Absolutely. Mm. So when you ask about the problem that we have, they are structural problems. Macroeconomic. They are macroeconomic problems. And... It's not going to be solved overnight. So if you're looking for a quick fix, you might not be able to get a quick fix to the energy problem. So crude oil prices, you know, in a way, moderating in the last few months or in the last few weeks. Um, um, the crude oil price for WTI right now is below $90. It is about 88. Exactly. Hmm. So maybe we're beginning to see some accretion. And there's also news about weak demand for oil. Hmm. OPEC at the last meeting, they only push out 100,000 um, barrels. barrels. I mean, that's insignificant. That's for, for September. Exactly. Anyone who's going to happen October, November, and December, up to January, when, when the, 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 uh, the winter is, is really... The winter uh, is uh, in the horizon. Yeah. So when I was talking about Nigeria being a major energy supply, should be, potentially, we, whereas we are actually energy beggars. What do I mean by that? We beg for energy to be supplied to our country, refined energy. And that's what we are paying for right now. If the crude oil prices move back up to 100, everybody is going to suffer. Why? Because the, the, the amount of subsidy that we pay for imported PMS, it's huge. So that's a major concern. And I, I don't think that that can you know, be addressed at the moment unless something drastically is done to it. Interesting uh, how we then how we, all of this put together take this inflation uh, uh, scenario to the financial markets as to impact on asset classes. Well, um, it depends on which side of the coin you you sit. Okay, um, whether the buy side and the sell side. When I talk or when we talk at commercial partners, when we talk to investors and we talk to the borrowers of funds, because you also need to consider the borrowers of funds. Mm. The borrowers of funds come to the capital market to raise funds. They would expect to raise those capital at a very cheap level. But right now, they cannot come into the market to raise capital at a cheap level. Even for those who are doing commercial papers? Yes. Is Even for those doing commercial papers, the good thing is they could have raised those funds at a much lower level. But because of the repricing of assets, mm. because of there's been shifts in the NPR, mm. they are or will be borrowing at a much higher rate. And they need those funds for expansion. So if you look at the investors on the other side, mm. the investors are actually bearing the bonds in the sense that right now they have negative return on their assets. Assets globally have been repriced. Mm. So if you have any asset that you bought maybe in the last um, let's say at the beginning of this year, your year to date on those assets would have depleted by almost 30 to 40%. That's huge. The only people that can benefit right now are those that are actually moving fresh cash into the market. Because okay. you have some assets that have been repriced and have mm -hmm. been right now mm -hmm. beaten badly mm -hmm. that you can actually buy at a very cheap price. At, 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 at a cheap level. Is that across levels, just equities, 
Uh, so it's not just equity. I'm talking about traditional asset traditional classes. Assets. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's not just Great. equities. You mm. can go into the bond market, mm -hmm. the euro bond market, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. instance. I mean, with that, you know that your 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 currency is protected or your portfolio is pro protected against the currency devaluation. And you also know that you are buying an asset at a very cheap level. There's a massive discount mm -hmm. to the market. Mm -hmm. And not only that, even in the U.S. market globally, if you're able, what we normally advise at commercial partners mm -hmm. is the fact that we need mm -hmm. to stay close to professionals. Okay, what do I mean by that? The professionals will tell you what kind of asset classes that you should invest in, the ETFs that you should invest in, because a lot of them, they've suffered year to I mean, to, to now. Yeah, but if you take it back home, how would the headline inflation at nearly 20% uh, impact September MPC? You know, the September MPC is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> so they've raised NPR, the monetary policy rate, you know, two consecutive, at the last yeah, two consecutive we did, we did 150, then we did 100. 150 and 100, that's almost 250. Yes. And yet they've not really addressed, or the, the inflationary pressure hasn't really been addressed. You know, we pay a lot of attention to monetary policies because we believe that they should be the Messiah. They are not, or should not be the only one dealing with this issue. The fiscal authorities need to come to bed with them to ensure that they together, collectively, address the situation. Monetary policy, the central bank and the MPC you know, uh, committee members, they are not going to address security issues. They are not going to address infrastructural issues, transportation and logistics. Mm -hmm. Energy problem, I'm not sure they can address that as well. Supply, so Supply chain issues. Supply chain e issues, mm -hmm. they cannot address it. Mm -hmm. What they try to do as much as possible is to continue to you know, make hawkish statements and hawkish measures mm -hmm. to address you know, inflationary pressure. Mm -hmm. Yesterday or two days ago, Central Bank came up to increase the savings rate. And when I saw it, I, I mean, yes, it's a good measure, but I'm not sure it can make any significant and impact. On, on inflation exactly. and interest because rates. Because what scenario. they're trying to do is, oh, let us encourage savers. Yeah. Let us encourage people moving away from their disposable income. Yes, uh, but, move narrow into the Yeah, yes, into, into, but into, your into disposable income is it's, actually it's not enough. It's stretched. <laughs> because when you collect your salary, you spend everything on consumption. Because inflation takes it. You're not even spending it on wants. You're actually spending it on needs. On needs. On needs. You only make room for savings when you have some... You have met, you've met, you've immediate, met immediate, 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 immediate needs. Exactly. Yes. So it's not going to address it. Mm. The, 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 the problem we have you know, is beyond just increasing the savers or this, uh, savers incentives. There are other structural problems that um, need to Within be the economy. Yeah. So, so how much impact do you think the current inflation and interest rate will have on corporate earnings in the second half uh, towards the end of the year? How do you think the corporates will feel that? I think the FMCG certainly would suffer, taking a cue from what we just discussed now, mm. because you need consumers to come to the market to buy the, your products. So if they're struggling with their disposable income, their purchasing power has really been waned completely, mm. they're not going to buy your products. And you now look at the cost effects of it as well, because your energy prices are moving up. Most of them will be powering their factories with you know, a lot of energy mm. um, costs. Yeah. So their margins, gross profit margins, even operating, um, sorry, the operating expenses are significantly going to be stretched. Mm. Uh, interesting uh, time, that, Lisa. I'm sure you folks will have your, your forecast for August and all of that for, for inflation. Well, whenever you get that published, let, let me know. What's no, your outlook? Problem. Just give me an idea. My outlook on what exactly? Inflation for August. Um, still on the rise. I think we're going to cross the 20. 20. Certainly, we're going to cross the 20. Okay. So well, towards the end of the year, we could see some moderation, but we will cross the 20, certainly. At least they elevated the, the, the upper end of the 19 level. We're already at the upper end of the 19, so we need to cross 20 to 21. I mean, if you look at um, Ghana, Ghana is 31%. Um, Roughly 32. Yeah, Angola is 31%. And holding an emergency <laughs> APC tomorrow. Exactly. Because the house is burning. It is burning. Everybody is actually behind the brunt. Uh, I wish I could. Well, uh, I'm not going to deny you this. <laughs> at the end, for a good interview, chat with you. Thank you so much. You're uh, welcome, boss. For those uh, insights and everything. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, to see you. Sukayari, the CEO at Commercial uh, Partners Asset uh, Management. <laughs>